Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment. Uh, my name is Ken Primus. I'm your host, as usual. And I have a gentleman here that is going to educate us, as we always say. And I want uh, Dieter to tell his story, where he is, how he's doing, what he's doing, all of that. And then, as usual, we'll go back and we are going to really get to the good stuff so that we can really learn. We want to know how he overcame uh, his fears, how did he deal, what they were, all of these things, so that we can help each other and become better human spirits. Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment. Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to be here. Um, as far as my story, mm -hmm. I am a third generation minister. That means that my parents and my grandparents, <laughs> grandparents. are ministers and uh, I am a minister as well. So that's pretty mm -hmm. crazy. It's, it's, a, it's a strange way to uh, grow up. It really, really is. There's mm -hmm. wonderful things about it. Yeah. Um, I think that it's been really, really special to me, sacred, in fact, that I was raised with the idea that you need to set aside some space in your life, in your heart, in the things that you do for something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. That's really, really important. And at the yes. same time, you need to make sure that everything you do is geared towards service of other people. So that yes. concept of transcendence and that concept of service are things that I was raised with. And I know that not everybody has that growing up. Mm -hmm. I think that some people are grow up with the idea that you got to look out for yourself and it doesn't yeah. matter what other people think. And there's nothing more in this life than, than the money you make. And, and people have overcome all kinds of stuff in order to find things that, that are meaningful to them. And so I'm really, really grateful mm -hmm. that I was raised with transcendence and service. Nice. And I have to say that I was an overachiever kind of kid. You know, it's one mm -hmm. of those things I always say, look, if your parents and your grandparents are plumbers, you're probably going to uh, <laughs> grow up operating a monkey wrench. It's just one yeah. of those things. You're, you're, you're coming from that place. And so I did all the things that I was quote unquote supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to church camp and I did all of those things and I, I did retreats and I started college when I was 13 years old with the idea wow. that I would get into seminary just as fast as I could because I wanted to get going with this life. Yeah. And in fact, um, when I was a teenager, I was elected international president of prayer, whatever that means. And what <laughs> it ended up meaning is that they flew me all over the world to mm -hmm. go speak at churches and run retreats and and try to get people involved in all this. So I was at 13, in. 13. Wow. I was in, mm -hmm. I was into the point that by the time I was 21, mm -hmm. I was married to a girl I met in church. Mm -hmm. We had a little baby and I was running a storefront church of my own. Wow. And, uh, there's really wonderful things about that. There's really uh -huh. crazy things about that. <laughs> there's really challenging things <laughs> about all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the crazy things is that, you know, when you're 21, it's kind of yeah. a funny thing to expect people to come to your church and, and tell them more about how they could be living their lives when yeah. I haven't lived any of my own life yet. Yeah. <laughs> but what I discovered is while I give thanks for what I grew up with and while I have nothing but love and respect to my parents, my grandparents, and everyone who's gone before, mm -hmm. I began to realize that no matter how open-minded you try to be, mm -hmm. the word church itself and similar mm -hmm. words like Christianity, Bible, Jesus, you know, ministry, all of these words, no matter how well-meaning you might be, those mm -hmm. words carry a very negative connotation for a lot of people. Yeah. There are a lot mm -hmm. of people that have been just absolutely burned by church, made to feel like they were no good, that they were mm -hmm. nothing, you know, yeah. and you don't have to spend too much time looking at the news to see some pretty blatant abuses of power by people yeah. in the name of church. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And so I had a real significant disconnect because I've got this calling. Mm -hmm. I want to serve. I believe mm -hmm. in this. I've got this burning for something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. I want to do something about it. And yet I became more and more clear that I just can't do it the way that my parents did it. No yeah. disrespect. It just wasn't yeah. working for me. And it didn't seem appropriate for the kind of world I wanted to be a part of, you know? Mm -hmm. So I walked away. In my mid-20s, I just walked away from the whole thing. And I oh. got a quote-unquote real job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was one of those things where I just... I wasn't mature enough to know that you could do the thing differently. I thought, well, yeah. it's all or nothing. I can't yeah. do it like my parents yeah. do it, so I'm not doing it at all. Yeah. You know, I hadn't grown up enough yet. I had to learn it the hard way. Yeah. 
But very, very long story short, what started to happen is I ended up in the computer industry. I worked for Google for a little while. I did mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, made a little bit of money, did all those, you know, by outer appearances, I was successful, but I still wasn't yeah. happy because I had yeah. turned my back on what my heart wanted to do. Yeah. And that's a lesson, you know, mm-hmm. it's one that I had to learn the hard way. But what yeah. started to happen is that people started to find me. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean that like we'd be getting ready for a meeting and somebody would say, hey, can you stick around after the meeting? I want to talk to you about something. And mm-hmm. I would think it would be like, OK, we got to get the reports in order or somebody yeah, doing yeah. something weird. We got to file a thing. But then the meeting would be over and it'd just be me and that other person in the room. And they'd say something like, hey, you know, I'm getting ready to, you know, going through a divorce. And I wonder what you think about that. Or mm-hmm. somebody would say, cousin so-and-so died. And what do you think happens after <laughs> after we die? Or people mm-hmm. would ask me these questions. And these are questions that you're not supposed to talk about at work. Yeah, at work. Yeah. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a place where there's people with degrees in computer science and robotics and engineering. And here I am yeah. with my degree in theology uh-huh. that, you know, I'm not... I, I didn't tell anybody about it. It's not like it was yeah. a secret, but it's just not the kind of thing you advertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know as well as I do that in the typical workplace, you're not supposed to talk about God's stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can get in trouble, in fact. You can get <laughs> fired sometimes. You know, yeah. All kinds of weird stuff happens. And so mm-hmm. it started to be a situation where I would say, hey, you know what? Let's go out to lunch and we can talk mm-hmm. about this. Or let's go get a yeah. cup of coffee. Or let's just take a walk. We can't talk about this here. Yeah. But people started to find me and more and more it started to happen where this community sort of grew up around the simple desire to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of backed into a whole different way of doing church. I don't even really call what I do church anymore, but there's nothing wrong with the word. I'm pro church, even though Mm -hmm. I'm not really doing church, Um, this community, let's say. Mm -hmm. And so here we are and we're still trying to figure it out, but it's going pretty well. That's my story. (laughs) (laughs) That is awesome. There's a lot packed in there. Um, As you were telling your story, I was actually uh, remembering some of mine. I grew up in a church and um, I had the calling, as you mentioned, that uh, desire to serve God. And I actually became a pastor. And I did just like you. I walked away. I, um, I was having problems with my marriage and uh, my marriage failed. And, and so I'm there in the church and I'm like, I got nothing to give, man. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> I actually turned my back on God and, and uh, decided to go on my own way. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be the best sin- sinner you ever saw. And I'm sure mm-hmm. he laughed. And, um, you know, I proceeded to do what I wanted to do as far as life, but he was still there tapping on you. Um, people, as you said, people coming out of nowhere, asking you questions. I would be in work in my suit on. Uh, I worked in the healthcare industry, and so I had to go to hospitals and nursing homes and these type of places. And I would walk in with my suit on, and they'd, they, uh, a resident would call me and say, Pastor, come on in and pray for me. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I never told this sure. person I was a pastor or any of that stuff. And so I couldn't get away from it. Um, as you were telling that story, we run, but we couldn't get away from it. Uh, he sent a, a whale to collect Jonah. Um, mm-hmm. That's you a know, great story. Because he was trying to run away from it. And so um, we have to, like you said, we have to find our way within the um, because we all grew up in a church church and we do see the abuse i read some of it today and i'm amazed that the leaders would say such things and uh, i know of people personally uh uh, died or that uh, the church crushed and so same here uh, i uh, all of those things that you were talking about i i absolutely identify with so I'm going to ask you this question, and and it also has to do with me. So here we are in this situation, in this current world. Uh, We still have this desire, this strong desire to make a difference in the life of people, to bring them from one place to another. So how do you manage the call, the desire, and... Uh, all of the guilt because we 
we picked a bunch of that stuff with us as we don't want to do it anymore like my father because my father was a preacher too so that's what i'm saying i i resonate mm -hmm. your story resonate with hey, me preachers kids man yeah the worst <laughs> pk kids are, are, are the worst like uh, i agree with you uh, and um uh so with all of this we want to do it different and yet we have turned and yet we're we find ourselves coming back uh, God still has, hasn't let go of us yet because we still have purpose on this planet. So how do you manage um, all of that, the guilt that you had? How did you come out of that? How did well, you I able think, to stand? Sure. I think for me it was a long process, as mm -hmm. I said, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and this is a universal lesson. You know, there are people listening to us talking right now who aren't uh, – pastors or yeah. anything else who aren't in that field or just trying to figure out their lives in a different way. And that's wonderful too. Yeah. This applies because the deal is what I have learned mm -hmm. is that it is really, really fundamentally important to disconnect your inner calling mm -hmm. from one particular outer manifestation. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you have some inner idea that gets filtered through your preconceptions and your upbringing and where you went to school yeah. and where you're from and what part of the world you're in and how much money you have and your emotional baggage and on and on and on and on and on. That inner desire gets filtered into one particular concept. Your ego goes, oh, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Well, you're probably wrong. Yeah. Because here's the thing. What do you know? Mm -hmm. This idea of, of God stuff. Mm-hmm. Or even something like art or mm -hmm. love or truth yeah. or beauty, anything big like mm -hmm. that is so much bigger than what you can fit between your ears. Yeah. And I think we make a mistake when we immediately try to process and codify it and explain it and categorize it. We limit the power of that beautiful thing. You know, when you love somebody, for mm -hmm. example, it's a real mistake to try to, well, I'm going to write on a chalkboard. Here are the reasons why love mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. well, it's more than you can prove in an equation. Yeah. And in fact, everything good, your spiritual understanding down to the reason you like chocolate chip cookies without raisins mm -hmm. or whatever it is, everything, yeah. the, the best things about you, honor, truth, beauty, art, like I said, these things can't be explained that way. Yeah. And there's a real problem that happens when you try to take some inner thing and say, okay, this is what my ego is okay with. Mm -hmm. It's so much more important. I mean, we call it the calling. Mm -hmm. Your job is to listen, yeah. not to dictate. Mm -hmm. And I think so often we get out of listening mode. And frankly, I think in our culture, we're not trained to listen. No. People say, what's your five-year plan? Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't want to be limited. I don't want my future self to be limited by my current conception. Mm -hmm. I want to be smarter in five years. Mm -hmm. I want to be more open-hearted in five years. I don't need to know that. That's God's job. Mm -hmm. yeah. My job is to follow and listen. You know, it's a little bit like, this is a funny thing to say, but it's a little bit like desires in your heart. Mm-hmm are like cravings in your body. Yes. You know, you read a, a diet book yeah, and it'll say something like, you know, your body knows what it wants. Mm -hmm. Your body, when it, it needs protein, your body it will send you a signal yeah. for, I need to eat things that have protein in it. But the problem is that signal gets filtered through mm -hmm. your junk yeah, and you can go, oh, my body needs protein. Therefore, I need to eat a Hershey bar. Yeah. Well, that's not really what it is. <laughs> You've just screwed that up with your, once again, preconceptions, ego stuff, emotional yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And so a nutritionist or somebody like that, part of their job is to go, here, we're going to decode that and teach you how to get back to the real calling mm -hmm. past what your notions of it mm -hmm. are. Well, you know what? Your desires in your heart are exactly like that. Somebody might say, you know, I really need this new car. Mm -hmm. And they break their neck to get the car and they get it and they realize it's not what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, it's not the outer thing. Mm -hmm. What you really wanted was something like freedom. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you were working on an abstract like freedom instead of one particular thing, you might be happier. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times somebody's come to talk to me and say, you know, I, I just really, I needed that person to, to be in my life. I needed to date that person and we got married and it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it wasn't about that person. Yeah. You needed to work on love. Yeah. And if you get clear on how love works, you will attract to yourself the right person because you'll be the right person and the relationship will work. And I mean, think about how yeah. many love stories, how many movies are based around exactly that concept. I thought it was going to be the prom queen. Mm -hmm. And then I realized later on, halfway through the movie, that it was actually this other person who was my best friend the whole time. And now I get it because something just exploded and I got out of my own way. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually the case. Um, 
and we have to deal with that because I had to deal with all of that as well. Um, as you mentioned it, I had to learn how to let go of all the things because you have your pressure from your, your dad and your mom and your society and all these different things. Um, in our cases, maybe some of the church people and all the different things. And then you're looking at yourself going, wow, I, I don't belong anywhere close to any of this, <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> and so um, you have to come to a place where, you know, you just say, you know what, God, um, that's it. I'm, I just want to be the best yeah. that I can be. I just want to be. Now, what that is, I don't know all of it, but I know you've given me some guidelines. I need to watch how I behave and how. And the main thing that he talked about uh, is love. So to, uh, and he knew how stupid we were. So he wrote down <laughs> in First uh, Corinthians exactly what it looks like, so we could go read it right. <laughs> and see yeah. what it is, so that we would know how to now behave and practice this form of knowledge that is laid down within the pa the patient that the page that is described as love, and so we have to learn how to give up this. Uh, as you said, all those things that we have accumulated uh, through the ages of our lives, uh, whatever uh, our parents say, whatever friends say or whatever, and come to a place where, you know what, let's begin over again. I yeah. just want to start over. I want to readjust my mentality because as you learn how to control even your thoughts, you're building new highways in your brains, all of these things yeah. uh, that you had to go on. Um, I had to go on a, a path of to learn how to love myself, man. I had mm. gained so much of all this other garbage that um, uh, I remember a scripture that says, they came to Jesus and asked him, what's the greatest of all the commandments? He says, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy mind. And uh, he said, the first is uh, the second is just as important as the first. He says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so mm -hmm. we all have to go on this journey to truly get a chance to love ourselves. Because if I can love me, it's easy to love you, man. It yeah. Well, and then put turn the other way around. You can't really love anybody more than you love yourself. Yes. You can't. If you if your concept of love is really really superficial, fundamental, mm -hmm. not much to it. Yeah. You're not going to love anybody else any higher than yeah. that. It's impossible for them to get any yeah. higher. It's it's absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And I love I love that that's the teaching. You know, it, it seems mm -hmm. like when they asked Jesus that, they were maybe they were hoping for a real technical explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you think about how many self help books and pop religious books are based around follow this method, it's yeah. 12 easy <laughs> steps and all of that. And it's really, really technical because yeah. technical is easy to sell. Mm -hmm. You can fit it between your ears. Yeah. But Jesus talked about something that does not, cannot, will not ever fit between your ears. He used the concept of love mm -hmm. because when you really love, it blows everything out everything of the water. Out. You don't care about Maslow's hierarchy of needs or whatever. Mm -hmm. You'll stand out in the rain when you love somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And you talked about Corinthians. My favorite part of that is one is the part that often gets gets missed. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. heard that, especially at weddings. They read, yeah. that love is patient, love is uh -huh. kind, bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Talk about all that stuff. And people go, okay, that sounds good. And then they start thinking about what flavor the wedding cake might be and they stop <laughs> listening. But the last line of that, or, or close to the last line of that is the best part where it says, Love does not rejoice over wrongdoing, yeah. but love rejoices with the truth. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring that up for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think sometimes people say, oh, bears all things, endures all things. I guess that means if that I love somebody, I'm going to let them walk all over me. Yeah. If I love somebody, I can be codependent and all that. That ain't what it That's says. What it love tells the truth. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you really love somebody, you can say, look, I love you so much that I'm not going to let you act like a jerk to me mm -hmm. because that's not who you are, Yeah. for example. Yeah. But that's not the whole reason I wanted to bring that up. I wanted to bring that up because when we're talking about calling, mm -hmm. like I said, not everybody listening here is a pastor. Yeah, yeah. Most people listening are trying to figure out what this means for their lives in other yeah. areas. And so I want to bring this as clear as I can. Mm -hmm. Your job is to follow love's calling in your heart, mm -hmm. whether that's to ministry or to paint and fences or yep. whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And so people go, okay, well, what does that mean? I don't, that seems too big. So here's what it means. Love tells the truth. That's what it says in the Bible. So take a minute and decide for yourself, 
what is what are the things that I just know are true? Not mm-hmm. factual, not mm-hmm. interested in facts because facts change. Mm-hmm. It was a fact that you were two feet tall when you were a kid and ain't a fact anymore. Yeah. It was a fact you lived in a different place. Lots mm-hmm. of things were factual. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Facts are transitory. Mm-hmm. There are there are some things you know that are absolutely true. Mm-hmm. And I want everybody listening to think about that list. And it might be a small list, mm-hmm. just a few things on it, and it might be a silly list. I know for a fact that Dancing in September by Earth, Wind & Fire is the best song ever written. (laughs) I know for a fact where the best (laughs) cup of coffee in my town is. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. You get to a place where there are things you know, just like you know you're alive. Just Mm -hmm. like you know when you know you're in love. You can't prove them because they're beyond that. What are those things for you? And if you become the kind of person who makes those kinds of lists, who thinks about these things, what is noble, what is kind, what is good, think on these things. Mm -hmm. If you start to think on these things, other stuff will become clear. The facts of your life, like I got bills to pay, Mm -hmm. will become secondary to the calling. You'll find it. Mm -hmm. But you can only find it when you dwell on what you know to be true. Like I said, might be a small list at the beginning. But if you give yourself to that process, that list will grow and so will you. I'm so glad that you um, stopped there and uh, explain what we mean by the calling. The calling is, a, uh, it's whatever you're called. I used to say to my kids, if you are called to be a garbage man, be the best. Get into yeah. that and uh, learn how to become uh, the best, how to take it to the next level, how to make it new. And uh, so that's what uh, um, he's talking about. He's, it's not, uh, some of you are not called to be pastors. We know this. And so uh, everyone has their gift in other things. Uh, uh, you have um, basketball players. You have musicians. We have artists you mentioned. But we all have that call. And whatever that call is, uh, get and find and ask the questions as, uh, you know, what is the truth to you? find it it is absolutely crucial because that is your truth is not mine i have to go and ask my own questions too and so i have to and this is what we are talking about this journey that we are all on is a journey of truth and i'm so glad that you stopped there and uh, brought our attention to it because it's absolutely right and everyone else focuses on the other part but the basis of everything is the truth. Yeah. yeah. And and I want people to know too that, you know, I think when we talk about words like calling, I think sometimes people expect it to be this big thing. Yeah. You know, and the music happens and the, the clouds part and, <laughs> and there's a sign and the chorus starts singing and this stuff. That yeah. might happen. Mm-hmm. Probably it won't happen like yeah. that. And mm-hmm. that's okay. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was young, because I grew up in church stuff, And because I started college so early, I didn't meet a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're 13, you don't get invited to the good parties. And you especially don't get invited when you're a minister's kid. It doesn't work (laughs) that way, you know. But I really wanted, I had this idea when other kids said, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be an astronaut. I was like, I'm going to be married. I want to find that person. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at a very early age. And at a very early age, I got shut down a lot because I was way too serious. You know, we'd be like 14 years old and be like, what are we going to name our kids? You know, crazy (laughs) stuff like that. And I was writing poetry and it was weird. But it got to the point where the only place I could meet girls, and I thought that was the most important thing, was going to church, yeah. going to my youth group every yeah. Sunday. So every Sunday I'd put on 100 pounds of hair gel and cologne and, and all that kind of stuff, and I'd dress up, and, and this is going to be the day I'm going to meet her. And some days I would meet a girl, and mostly I, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Some days we'd go out, mostly we wouldn't. But it never worked out because I was coming from an ego place. Yeah. But then one day... I looked at all the hair gel and I thought, you know what? I just don't have the energy for this. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not ready. It's not time for me to do this. I'm just yeah. going to put some jeans on and maybe I'll go to church and learn something for a change yeah. instead of trying to date somebody or whatever. I'm not ready, so I'll wait till I'm ready. Okay, I get it. Uh-huh. And that day was the day that Jenny walked into that room mm-hmm. and we just celebrated 27 years of marriage. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Because what happens is you get out of the way. And yeah. I want to tell that story because there's a couple of things. First of all, once again, it's about getting out of the way. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is when she walked in, it wasn't the big moment where the clouds part and all that. It was more like, oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. And I knew and she knew, but it was more like seeing an old friend who you haven't seen in a while. Oh, where you been? 
that's sometimes what the calling feels like. And I think yeah. most of the time that's what it is. Yeah. Again, to everybody listening, there are things in your life that click like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is my song. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is how to do this thing. Oh, this is where I ought to live. Mm -hmm. There are things like that. Yeah. That's what it looks like. You just get a little nod. You know, mm -hmm. and that's all you need to go forward. Start looking for that instead of big dramatic movie yeah. moments, mm -hmm. and things will get easier. It's I call it uh, neither I call it the breadcrumbs. Look for the breadcrumbs. <laughs> Love it <laughs> because Love it. it's it's those little nuggets. It's little things, and it come mm -hmm. as you said. And sometimes it's I was talking to this guy, and he was telling me that um, when uh, his best man a couple of days before he he's going to get married. His best man, which is his best friend, died of a drug overdose, and he wow. didn't he didn't know that he was even hooked on drugs. He, he had no knowledge. He had no idea that he hid it from him, and he said sure. that he the trauma hit him. But he said one day he's sitting down, and uh, this song came over the radio, and a song uh, began. He said that song, the words in that song, those little breadcrumbs, he said, I was able to stand up and it changed this man's life. One song. And it wasn't, he said he was looking all over the place to try and find the answer and all this stuff. And he said he heard one song and it changed his life and it propelled him. And he got his revelation as it propelled him in his life. He got fascinated about um, numbers and God began to open up numbers to him and the meaning of numbers and how he is pre he's talking to this Ivy League college now about numbers from one song. Mm -hmm. And so and people need yeah, to keep that, that word, you know. I love that. Yeah. Listen and be brave enough to give yourself to whatever it is that you hear. That's yeah, the combination. That's it, man. And he took off and I had a pleasure just listening to him talking about that because the song triggered him into going into books and began to study and stuff like that and start studying about how people get out of grief. And, and he now is teaching. He's a pastor teaching somewhere. Um, I interviewed him a couple of days ago and it was marvelous stuff to see how each one of us um, get our, that, as you said, that small awakening, the breadcrumbs. And I keep telling people, if you, you have to be aware of it or you'll miss it. And so uh, the Bible tells us to live in the present. Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the future. He tells you, now is the time. You yeah, know, you got enough to worry about right now. <laughs> yeah. And so in every, um, I've heard gurus, I've heard uh, all kinds of every culture and religion teaching people to live in the present. Because if you live there, you will see those crumbs. It'll begin to, you'll be, be aware of it and you'll start asking questions. You know, yeah. you said, uh, Jenny showed up and you go, nice. You know, you knew <laughs> and yeah. you have this, because of the awareness that you had, you first did the, the thing that you were, were all called to do, and that is to surrender. There is a principle mm -hmm. of surrendering, and I guarantee you, if you had gotten dressed and put on all the other things, you would have missed it. You would probably been yep. just all over the place and just missed it. Exactly right. You know? Exactly right. But you did the first step. The first step, people, is always the surrendering. And then once you have done that, then what happens? You you place yourself into the now. You just don't know it, but you just did. You're like, oh, I can't do all of this crazy stuff. And then you start walking, boom, your blessing is right beyond that. That's right, because it's about being open to something bigger than you are. That's yeah. what you want. I don't need to impose my ego on the world. I don't need it to match my expectations. I want to be surprised. Yeah, life, man. That's I'm so okay beautiful. with that. I, I love life because of that. I love life because of that, because I do my best to live in a state of expectation because yeah, I, think I that, want that. Yeah, man. I think that, the, you know, people talk about praying for very specific things. God, give me a new car. God, give me this job. Yeah. God, do this and that. People give their to-do lists to God like he's Santa Claus or yeah. something. And I get it. Everybody mm -hmm. wants stuff. And I understand that. But 
for me, I think the, the best prayer I've ever heard is, God, may I know it when I see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that has everything else in it. And that's really what Solomon prayed for. That's really how this whole thing works. God, may I know it when I see it. Because I know you're already here. Mm-hmm. Let me just not miss it. Yeah. Because I don't need this to happen on my terms. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, things is it says, come, let's reason together. And I love that, man. I get high off of that because <laughs> it, um, in my mind, how I interpret that, because it tells us that uh, Adam, uh, when God came looking for him, he says, as it was their custom. And so I tell people in every, every uh, uh, aspect of life, um, you know, your creator, I know people call him, different things or whatever I tell them, develop a custom with your creator, Mm -hmm. whoever your creator is, develop a custom so that you can, he can expect you. Don't bring a list. Just, just (laughs) have a custom with him. You don't sit down and say, Hey, you know, I had a bad day. Let's talk. Um, Have a custom with him. And so that when you have that, what is happening is that you're now beginning to, um, as the principle goes, to love your God. And so you're loving your God. And as a result of your doing that, having developed this custom, you're beginning to love yourself because that relationship is going to be a mirror of what you need to be looking at. Absolutely. I love it. You know, so I love to hear, tell people, I always stare them, find your custom, whatever it is, morning, night, who cares? But I, 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 just, I love how you put that. It's like Santa Claus. You don't need a list. He knows what you need. It says that he knows what you need. You yeah, know? that's the thing. I mean, over and over again, we're told that Jesus is very specific about it, but there's it's in a few places where the idea is, we well, just stop asking God for stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, over and over again, that's the mm-hmm. message. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Because that's stuff is not what you're here to do. Your job is not to accumulate possessions. Yeah. Your job is not that. Your job is to grow. Your job is to serve each other. Your job is to love and be loved. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. And so often the getting your way is exactly the thing that's getting in the way Mm -hmm. of you being able to do that. All the time. All the time. You're not here to get your way because love, once again, is very inconvenient. (laughs) Love is going to get out of your way. Yeah. And so your job is to listen more, going back to it. It's called the calling for a reason. It's calling you listen to it <laughs> and then go do something about it Absolutely. that's the thing the action step is important you know the the scripture says love the lord your god with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind mm-hmm. and all your might mm-hmm. and that means you got to take action action yeah. i love that part love is a verb yeah you know and so it's about finding that verb of your life mm-hmm. and uh, that's why we are here and i tell people uh, the experience of the human spirit and the human uh, uh, it is a beautiful experience and we ought to experience it and not allow all of the different things. And uh, I try to mention the thought life to learn how to uh, become the master of the thought. Uh, there's a principle uh, that uh, um, uh, Jesus said in the Bible, it says, take no thought saying. And so he gives us the formula of how not to take that thought when it comes, because it comes a hundred times a day. It comes from any place, all over the place. It comes from TV, radio, your stuff you heard 20 years, yeah, all over. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, but he said, t- don't take it by saying, don't own it. Don't say, I accept this into myself, because I, I was called to, to teach at a prison and I walked in and all the big guys are standing there. And I said, all of you are here because you couldn't, you, you, you couldn't even handle a thought. And they looked at me and wanted to know <laughs> what I was talking about. And I said, yeah, someone came and plant that thought in your head to do what you did. And it, that thought uh, required a corresponding action. And mm-hmm. because your does. corresponding action it caused you to do and behave a certain way. So the once you have learned how to control that aspect of your life, then the other ones are going to be okay. Go and develop your customs and um, live a life that is rewarding. Serve people. I mean, it is the most powerful thing on this planet when you serve. Uh, Jesus washed feet. I mean... If people think about what that was, 
that oh yeah you know what took place well, because you know it's ridiculous that's the point of the whole thing i mean and in fact and it's not unique to scripture over mm-hmm. and over again you know you want to think about that joseph campbell that hero's yeah. journey the last step in the hero's journey is to bring back what you have learned to the tribe Yes. Over and over again, the the job of the hero is to give back. Yes. That's the point of so, all of this. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you got for yourself. Who mm-hmm. cares? Yeah. The point is, how are you helping everybody else? Yeah. Prosperity should not be measured by how much money you have, but yeah. rather by your ability to take care of the people around you. Yes. That's the goal. Yeah. And it's, um, it is the goal. And uh, in my book, I wrote this book, Threads of Enlightenment. The very last uh, chapter is becoming a servant and that's what this is all about is about that journey so that you and i have learned through life to cook and so we have learned how now to prepare a dish that when we sit down with someone and we serve that dish up it's able to feed them and help them to become nourished that they be able to stand up and become stronger and begin to move and so our hope is that with this meal that they have just received, they can now go ahead and take that journey and learn to cook so that they can now go and cook for someone else. And so this is yeah. the journey that we are learning how to cook and feed each other uh, through servitude. And so I love the fact that you are here. You, you kept us uh, focused on the keys that I think that each and every one you talked about what uh, the calling represents and uh, uh, all of, you talk about truth, you talk about all of these things. And so uh, here you are today and um, I'm going to come and I want to get to find out, I want to get some of your food, Ida. How do I get <laughs> to, so that I can come to your restaurant, sit down <laughs> and get some Love good it. food? Well, the best place to find me is on my website. It's way past okay. So that's W A Y P A S T O K A Y, way past okay.com. And on my website are links to the books I've written and my blog posts and uh, my uh, just all kinds of stuff. You can go and see the calendar where I'm going to be speaking next. And there's recordings, audio and video recordings of, nice. of my past talks that I've given. I have a little part where people send me questions and there are all mm-hmm. kinds of questions. And I just answer their questions. There's these little nice. videos about a minute long called Ask Dieter where, where we talk about stuff, all kinds of stuff. But again, that's waypastokay.com. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at waypastokay. So those are the places to find me. Excellent. So I'm going to point everyone to you. Now, the books and what I tell people about books and author, authors, when the author writes this book, it is their revelation that they have and they put that into a format again i use the analogy so that you can eat this meal so Mm -hmm. when you go and you buy a dieter's book you are actually having a one-on-one conversation with him yeah i like that it is a private situation you're in your house you are sitting down and on your coffee table or laying in your bed and he's sitting right there talking to you and giving you all that guidance and wisdom that he has gained so i i i ask that you guys get to his site buy a couple of those books give it to people give it to friends because of the things that he has deposited here is really good food so i want (laughs) to thank you you so much sir for coming to threads of enlightenment and uh, uh, spending your precious time with us and i as i said i am the conduit between the people and yourself and i will send them all to you and so that they can get some good food oh thank you very much i'm honored it's been a lot of fun talking with you today thank you sir you have a good evening you as well bye bye Everyone who's listening to this podcast, we hope to continually help you to learn how to embrace moments of darkness because it is in the darkness that we learn how to develop and use our abilities to truly see those parts of ourselves often invisible to us in the light. It becomes your responsibility to navigate through all of your trials to find out 
who you truly are and begin your journey to loving yourself, which is possibly one of the most difficult things you will ever do in your life. To love yourself and to find the real you, but always remember to enjoy the journey. Thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can support us financially, we deeply appreciate it.